Acts 12 and 1. And it reads this way. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. Intending to persecute them, he had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house. Dear God, we give you praise for your word. We give you praise for every single letter that's on every single page. For we know that every single letter that's on every single page is for teaching and for instruction. So dear God, this day we say that your word will reign, number one, in this house. You, the word, will reign, number one, in this house. I ask that every person in this house will have a mind to perceive, a heart to believe, and ears to hear. May we truly be transformed and changed by the renewing of our mind, by your power, and by your word. Dear God, I ask that even this day we will leave different than the way we came in. May it be you who speaks through me and not me by myself, for this is merely lips and a tongue of clay. But I ask that you will assist me, equip me, and empower me to speak your word in this house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. On the count of three, do me one big favor and say the key of prayer. The key of prayer. One, two, three. The key of prayer. You may take your seats. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to preach the third sermon out of this series. Pastor does a lot of sermons. I never thought that I'd partake in one of his series. <laughs> but thank God that we have a man who stands behind this pulpit and gives us fresh bread every Sunday and Wednesday. Amen. And the series that came out of his spirit is one that I believe is going to change and transform this church. Amen. If we really get hold of it. Today's sermon is the key of prayer. I'm so glad that Steve Haas is, Ted Haas is here because he's going to talk about prayer after the service. Yeah. Nothing with God is coincidence at all. Amen. I want to read for you the text one more time. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. There is something about prayer. There is something about intercession that makes the difference. When we come to God and we speak our mind and we speak our heart, we are praying to Him and we open our mouth and we speak to Him. We are talking out of here. We are talking out of our spirit. And when we talk out of our spirit, we are praying to Him. The Bible says that we pray mysteries in the spirit. There are some times that we pray and we don't know exactly what it is that we're specifically praying because it's a mystery. But the spirit that dwells on the inside of you gives you the word and gives you the utterance and gives you the know in all to pray something that you didn't know that you were going to pray for and you never know what you're praying for you just might find out what it was that day or you might find out what it was that week or you might find out what it was that year but there's something specifically important about praying in the spirit yes. there's something important about praying to our Lord and we must remember that when we pray he always hears us Psalms declares it this way, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning that we serve a God who hears and we serve a God who answers prayer. There's never a time in your life that God will never hear your prayer. There's never a time in your life that the Lord will turn a deaf ear to your prayer. No, he says, I hear you. And when I hear you before, I'll hear you now. And what I do, I do forever. It's time that we realize that the God we serve hears our prayer. 
Peter finds himself in a predicament. Peter finds himself in a situation that's not altogether lovely and that's not altogether comfortable. There was a movement going on where the Jewish people wanted to persecute the Christians. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had already risen. He had already ascended to the Father. And he gave them a mandate. He gave them a decree. And it was this. Go ye into all the world and preach the good news. And I will be with you until the end of the age. The disciples, the apostles, they, they grabbed on to that word. They held on to that word. And they said, now that I have this word, now I'm going to act upon it. With the always reminding word of Jesus that said, but remember, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, for I've overcome the world. Amen. It's the same word to you today. But take heart, for he, our Christ, has overcome the world. They took hold of this word and they acted upon it. And James, the disciple, finds himself dead for it. That's when we would have quit. That's when we would have stopped. That's when we would have said, oh, our, our buddy is gone and, and our buddy is dead and, and now they're persecuting us. And do I really have it to stick with this? Do, do I really have the guts to stick this through and to see this out? And Peter said, no, I, I remember a word. I remember a word that my master gave me. And it was this, you, Peter, I will build my church upon this rock of revelation and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to stick to the word and I'm going to stick to the mandate and I'm going to do what my master told me to do. Hallelujah. Peter finds himself in a predicament for preaching this word, for preaching this gospel. And now he finds himself in prison. Acts 12 says it this way. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some, just some special folk, just some special people. Don't ever think it's strange and don't ever think it awkward when you begin to stand up for the Lord and things just begin to hit you from sideways and, and you begin to try to witness and all of a sudden your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or your mother-in-law tries to give you some bad news or tries to make your day hard and all of a sudden you don't understand why everything is going the way it's going. It's just the enemy trying to attack some special folk. You're it. You're it. You're that some people. Hallelujah. And Peter was one of those some. He finds himself now in prison awaiting trial. Not knowing what to expect, not knowing what to do. I, I've preached this word, I've stood up for this word. I led thousands to my master. And now I'm here. With my wrist chains and my arms chained to a wall with Roman, with Jewish soldiers watching over me? Is this really what it's going to come down to? Is this really what it's going to boil down to? I'm going to be here forever awaiting my trial with the potentiality that I might die? I just started this thing. I just started this work. And now I might die for it like my friend James. Sometimes we have to get to the point where we say, so be it unto me. Whatever my lot, I will give him everything I have. And I'll give him everything that he's given me. And I'll give it back. So that I may feed somebody. But there's something that was happening. There was something that was going on while Peter finds himself between two soldiers in a cold, cold prison. The Bible says it this way. But the church. But the church. 
but the ecclesia, but the church was earnestly praying for him. There's the mandate. But the church was earnestly praying for him. There's never a situation in your life. There's never a time in your life where prayer will become unnecessary. I don't care what it is. Prayer is always necessary. When you find yourself in a time of trial, prayer is necessary. When you find yourself by yourself, prayer is always necessary. When you just got walked out on, prayer is always necessary. When you just got lied on, prayer is always necessary. There's never a time in your entire life where prayer will ever be unnecessary. There's a mandate for you and for me, and it's this, pray. We have all sort of keys on our key ring, and every single key on that key ring has a specific duty, it has a specific assignment, and there's only one keyhole that that key fits in. Worship is wonderful, praise is fine, but there's something about the key of prayer. You see, because the, pre the key of prayer is going to unlock the heavenlies. The key of prayer is going to unlock your situation. The key of prayer is going to give you peace in your mind. The key of prayer is going to fix everything that you need. So when you find yourself in confusion and you find yourself in worry, the key of prayer is the one that you're going to have to pull out of your pocket and put into your life. Begin to use the key of prayer. Day and night because we serve a God who hears and we serve a God who answers. Peter finds himself by himself in this prison, but the church was earnestly praying for him. It translates this way. The activity of asking and the place of asking. This is earnest prayer. The activity of asking and the place of asking. Prayer is not something that we do just to do it. Prayer is not something that we do just in the morning. Prayer is not something that we do just at night. Prayer is something that you do all day long. If you're at school, you pray. If you're at work, you pray. If you're in the supermarket between the frozen carrots and peas, you pray. Amen. It's a mandate. It's the activity of asking. And it's the place of asking. Something happened during that prayer. Something was released during that prayer. A season changed during that prayer. A miracle happened during that prayer. And while Peter finds himself by himself, Awaiting his trial, awaiting his, his persecution, awaiting his imminent death. Something happens. Something takes place. And it's this. An angel shows up. And the Bible says that the angel struck him on the side. Your prayer releases angelic intervention in your life. You see, prayer is not something that we just do. Prayer is not something that we just say. But anything that comes out of your mouth that goes to the Lord goes into his ear. And he opens his mouth and releases his will for your life. And the angel strikes him on the side and says, Quick, Peter, get up. It's time to go. Go. 